physiology of degradation well degradation so like it involves the coordinated activity of the tongue soft palate pharynx esophagus and 22 separate muscle groups well the buccal phase the bolus basically it has three phases the buccal phase pharyngeal phase and esophageal phase in the buccal phase the bolus is forced into the oropharynx the pharyngeal esophageal phase is controlled by the medulla and the lower pons all roots except the one into the digestive tract are sealed off peristalsis movement moves the food through the pharynx into the esophagus then comes the oral phase oral preparatory phase in this phase the food is uh, ready by uh, for swallowing by reducing and mixing it with saliva by muscles of the jaw and the oral cavity chewing uses the combination of elevators and depressors lip maintain a tight seal while the buccinator returns food from the vestibule during the mast mastication Throughout this phase, the soft palate is lowered by the action of the palatoglossus and the palatopharynges. This air, the airway remains open. Then the oral phase proper. The soft palate now moves upward, and the top, and the tongue drops downward and backward. At the same time, the larynx and the hyoid bone moves upward. Elevation of the hyoid is initiated as the bolus is positioned in the swallowing preparatory phase. The bolus is pushed from the oral cavity by the peristaltic movement, like action of the tongue. Here we can see how the tongue is lowered and the, uh, how the tongue is moving the bolus into the oropharynx. A soft palate is lowered in this phase. Now the pharyngeal phase. As the bolus moves back by the tongue, sequence of events are initiated to protect the airways. A diaphragmatic contraction inhibited, soft palate elevated to ensure the closure of the nasopharynx to prevent the knee regurgitation nasal regurgitation then the vocal cords start to close then comes the initiation of the swallowing involves the contact of the food with the fascial arches or the mucosa overlying the posterior pharyngeal wall this is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve bolus enters the oropharynx and reflex is initiated The constrictors are relaxed to dilate the pharynx while the pharynx and the larynx are raised by the longitudinal muscles. The bolus is propelled over the epiglottis by the action of the constrictors contracting, uh, contracting in sequence. So the constrictor relaxes to dilate the pharynx. While the pharynx and the larynx are raised by the longitudinal muscles, the bolus is propelled over the epiglottis by action of the constrictor contracting in sequence. Throughout this phase of swallowing, respiration remains suspended. As the food passes over the posterior part of the curved epiglottis, it is diverted into the lateral food channels and the piriform fossa. The upper esophageal sphincter during this phase and is pulled open by the forward movement of the hyoid bone and the larynx. The upper esophageal sphincter, remember, during this phase and is pulled open by the forward movement of the hyoid bone and the larynx. This sphincter closes after the passage of the food. This passage is, um, of swelling is involuntary and totally reflexive. The reflex lasts approximately one second and involves the motor and the sensory tract from the ninth and 10th cranial nerves. Here we can see how the bolus is <coughs> pushing the epiglottis down and it is going to the esophagus. And the upper esophageal sphincter is relaxed in this phase. Now comes the esophageal phase. This uh, phase commences as soon as the food passes the cricopharyngeal sphincter. The peristaltic movement carries the food throughout the esophagus. The lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and the bolus moves into the gastric cardia. The hyoid bone soft and the tongue move back to its original position. Here yes, you can see how it's the bolus is passing into the esophagus. And now into the stomach. In the esophagus, the peristalsis the produced by a series of localized reflexes in the response to distension of the wall by the bolus. Wave-like muscular contractions. The circular smooth muscles contract behind and relaxes in front of the bolus. Followed by the longitudinal contraction and shortening of the smooth muscle rate of 2 to 4 cm per second. After the food passes into the stomach, lower esophageal sphincter contracts. The swallow reflex is a complex neurologic event involving the participation of the higher cortical centers and the brainstem centers. Cortical centers are the prefrontal, frontal, and the parietal cortices. The efficient pathways from the medulla and the pons involve uh, the two main cranial motor nuclei. 
न्यूक्लियस एम्बिगुअस फॉर द मसल्स ऑफ द पैलेट फेरिक्स एंड द लैरिंग्स द हाइपोग्लोसल न्यूक्लियस फॉर द मसल्स ऑफ द टंग एंड द मोटर न्यूक्लियस ऑफ द ट्राइजामाइन एंड द फेशियल फॉर द मसल्स ऑफ द जॉइंट लिप नो व्हाट इज द गैस्ट्रोइसोफेजियल रिफ्लक्स डिजीज well g it is a loss of the competition of the lower esophageal sphincter reflux esophagitis is the complication what is the reflux esophagitis is stratified squamous epithelium resistant to abrasion from food it is sensitive to acid and due to the acid reflux it is uh, happens due to the reflux of the gastric acid from the stomach what is the pathogenesis basically the reflux of the gastric juices causes the mucosal injury It is made as a stratified squamous epithelium. The condition that predisposes GRD are the alcohol and the tobacco use. The obesity, the CNS depressants, the pregnancy, hiatal hernia, and delayed gastric emptying, increased gastric volume. Now the morphology, the mild GRD only in simple hyperemia is evident. In the mild GRD, only a simple hyperemia is evident with significant disease. Eosinophils are recruited in the squamous mucosa, followed by the neutrophils. Basal zone hyperplasia exceeding 20% of the total epithelial thickness with elongation of the lamina propria papillae. So, uh, in morphologically, if you see in the mild GRD, only simple hyperemia is there, but with a significant disease, the eosinophils are recruited and in squamous mucosa are followed by the neutrophils. And the basal zone of the hyperplasia exceeds 20% of the total epithelial thickness with elongation of the lamina propria papillae. The clinical feature are the retrosternal pain worse in the lying down position, dysphagia. Regurgitation of sore tasting gastric content, streaks of blood in the vomitus and anemia. Well, the investigation is the barium swallow in the terminal bulk position reveals the reverse flow of the barium, and the esophagoscopy reveals the hyperemic mucosa at the lower end of the esophagus. Well, if we talk about the treatment of the proton pump inhibitors, the H2 histamine receptor antagonist, the complications are the esophageal uh, ulcers. Hematemesis, malignant stricture formation, and bad esophagus. Well, the complications: the lungs are aspiration, pneumonia, bronchitis, and the larynx is the posterior laryngitis causing the throat pain, uh, throat pain, hoarseness, contact ulcers, and granulomas. Posterior glottic stenosis and carcinoma larynx. Now, what is the bad esophagus? It is the complication of the chronic GRD. It is an intestine, uh, intestinal metaplasia with esophageal squamous epithelium. It is an uh, intest, uh, tissue or intestinal metaplasia with the esophageal squamous mucosa, more common in white males between the 40 to 60 years. It is a pre-malignant condition, confers increased risk of adenocarcinoma. Seen in 0.22% of the people, morphology seen as a patch of a red velvety mucosa extending upward from the gastroesophageal junction the metaplastic mucosa alternates with a residual smooth pale squamous mucosa interfaces with a light brown columnar gastric mucosa distally intestinal metaplasia goblet cells having a distinct mucosa vacuoles that stain pale blue by the hee and impart a shape of a wine goblet to remain cytoplasm Remaining cytoplasm. So the goblet cells having a distinct mucosa muc uh, mucus vacuoles that stain pale blue by the hematoxylin eosin and imparts the shape of a wine goblet to remain cyto remaining cytoplasm. Diagnosis requires endoscopic and a histologic evidence. Now the clinical types are the long segment metaplastic uh, changes greater than three cm and the short segment metaplastic changes less than three cm. The types of dysplasia: it is low grade is a negligible risk of carcinoma and high grade a high risk of carcinoma. Well, the treatment is in low-grade displays that the patient screened regularly with a repeat endoscopic and multiple biopsies. The high-grade displays are surgical resection, esophagectomy, the photodynamic therapy, and the laser ablation. Now, the achalasia cardia is a primary esophageal motility disorder characterized by the triad of the incomplete lower esophageal sphincter relaxation, increased lower esophageal uh, sphincter tone, and apastalsis of the esophagus. It is caused by the failure of the distal esophageal inhibitory neurons. Here we can see the bird beak appearance or the red tail. Idio the etiology is the idiopathic due to the degenerative changes in the neural innovation. Acquired secondary achalasia arises in the Chagas disease. In this, the trypanosoma cruzi infection, destruction of the myentric plexus, failure of the peristalsis, esophageal dilatation. 
In the clinical features, the women between the 30 to 40 years commonly infect, uh, affected. The dysphagia more for the liquids than solids, the regurgitation of the solid fluid at night, foul smelling, retrosternal discomfort, and radiation of the pain in the intrascapular region. Recurrent respiratory tract infection and the features of anemia. Investigation is a barium solo. We can see the bird beak appears to rat tail in the lower end. The esophagoscopy reveals a dilated sac containing a stagnant food and fluid, splashes out with each heartbeat due to the uh, uh, done uh, to rule out the proximal malignancy. X ray chest mid mass pro uh, produced by the dilated esophagus. The esophageal manometry shows a higher pressure at the lower esophageal sphincter and failure for relaxation. The low pressure in the body of the esophagus. But the treatment of the choice is modified Harold's operation. The forceful pneumatic dilatation of the lower esophagus for those unfit for surgery. Injection treatment is the injection of the bottling toxin injection into the lower esophageal sphincter endoscopy. Acts by interfering the cholinergic excitatory neural activity in the lower esophageal sphincter and drugs are the sublingual nifedipine for the short term relief. Thank you.